Okay, in this example, I wanna show you the major mistake I see students make when they're solving a linear equation with fractions. And I'm gonna do that by working through multiple examples that are gonna get progressively more difficult. Now, the first example is just a linear equation. There's no fractions, but I wanted to include this to remind you of what it is that we do to go ahead and solve a linear equation. Remember, when we're solving a linear equation, we're trying to isolate our variable. And we're gonna isolate our variable by using our inverse operations. So in this case, we have x plus one, so to undo adding one, we are gonna subtract a one and make sure you do it on both sides. So therefore we have x equals two. Now again, when x is equal to two, that is going to be the value that satisfies the equation. So the major mistake I see students making is not multiplying by the LCD. A lot of students, when they only see one fraction, they say, well, I can just go ahead and do this. I'm gonna apply the same process with here with fractions. So let's go ahead and work through it the um, this using the same technique, and then we'll go through the multiplying by the LCD. So if I was gonna use my inverse operations, what I would do is I would subtract a one half on both sides. That's what we did over here. So therefore I'd have X equals three minus one half. And here's where a lot of students make their mistakes. Either they have no idea how to subtract three minus one half, or they're just gonna make a mistake with fractions. One thing I cover in my major mistakes with fractions. So the key here is remember to write your integer as a fraction with the same denominator as two. So therefore three can be written as six halves minus one half. And therefore my final answer is five halves. Now again, the major mistake I said was multiply by the LCD, which is the least common denominator. The nice thing here, guys, is there's only one denominator, which is two. So what happens when I multiply everything by two in this example? Well, what happens is I get rid of my denominator. Two times x is two x. Two times one half is one. And then two times three is going to be six. So you just gotta make sure you subtract or multiply two times everything. But now you can see that this problem is a lot easier, a less, like, a less likely for me to be able to make some mistakes. Okay, now in this next example, the inverse operations are not that bad. And you can go ahead and go through it. Most students will get to the minus one on both sides. Um, a lot of students will make their mistakes here. They don't understand or they get confused with, again, the fraction. Like, what is this inverse operations? How do I, un how do I isolate the x? Well, the x is actually being divided by two. So therefore, to undo divided by two, I need to multiply by two. So you're gonna multiply by two on both sides and then X is gonna equal four. Now that's fine, but you can see how there was a lot of steps in there, right? So let's go and take a look at this is what if I just multiply by the LCD because there's only one value that was in my LCD, right? Or in my denominator, which is two. So what would happen if I just multiplied everything by two? Well, there I would get X plus two equals six. And you can see by just doing that very easily mentally, then I was able to go ahead and solve this. And I didn't have to deal with any fractions. And that's the mistake that students make is when you're multiplying by this LCD, you're eliminating the fractions. Watch what happens here. In this next row, all I have is a denominator of two. So rather than trying to use my inverse operations, I think you guys would agree. I don't wanna subtract the one and then multiply by two. It's just more work. So what I'm gonna do is just multiply everything by two. And again, just make sure you multiply everything by two. And really, once you can do, once you make sure you avoid that mistake um, by multiplying, not, you know, making sure you multiply everything by two, you're basically good. Here, we're gonna have x plus two is equal to three. Now, I just subtracted two. The problem is not that bad. And again, we do it again here, multiply by two. So x plus one equals six x equals five. You can see that I'm not even having to show all my work. Now this next one is great because you can see that all the denominators are equal to two. And anytime you have everything, all your denominators are the same, you can actually just eliminate it. Because again, what would happen if you multiplied all of these by two? You would just have the equation x plus one equals three, and therefore x would equal two. Now for this last round of examples, you can see I actually have different denominators here. Um, so the LCD is no longer two, right? Now we need to figure out what is the least common denominator. And so what we're gonna wanna do in this case is just write a list of my multiples for my denominators. Again, you can write three as one, but we're not gonna write the multiples of one because um, that's one, two, three, four, right? So if you write this like two, four, six, eight, dot, 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 dot. And then you could do three, six, nine. But again, you can see six. Six is the smallest number that both two and three evenly divide into, which we call a multiple. So therefore, I am going to multiply by six. 
Okay, so again, when I multiply everything times six, now again, what's so important about six is two divides into six, how many times? Three times, so therefore you'd have three times x. Three divides into six, how many times? Two, two times one is two. And then one obviously divides into six, six times, six times three is equal to 18. But again, by multiplying by the LCD, you guys can see that I eliminated my fractions. Now I can just subtract a two on both sides and 3x equals 16, and then divide by 3. So therefore, my final answer is x equals a 16 thirds. Now, one, some things people look at this and they'll say, oh, to find the LCD, you just multiply your denominators. Sometimes. In this case, we don't want to multiply all of my denominators. If you multiply 2 times 3 times 6, that's going to equal 36. That's a big number. You could use 36, but then you're going to have to simplify the answer as well. So again, what we're looking for is what is the smallest number that 2, 3, and 6 all divide into? And you can list the multiples if you want to, but the more practice you get at this, the faster and easier it's going to become to identify the LCD here as just 6. And again, you can always check that. Does 2 divide into 6? Yes. Does 3? Yes. Does 6? Yes. And that is the smallest number that they all divide into. How many times does 2 divide into 6? three times, so that's three times x. How many times is three divided by six? That's gonna be two, two times one is two, and six divides by six one time, so that's gonna equal one. Then here, I can just subtract the two on both sides, three x is equal to negative one, divide by three, and therefore x equals negative one third, okay? Now, in the last example, again, you notice that in this case, um, we don't wanna multiply them again, six times you know, four, 24, that does work, but is there a smaller number that they all divide into? Um, they don't share that common denominator like six in this case, but I think if you guys list these multiples out like you did here, you'll see that this LCD in this case is going to be 12. So again, I'm just gonna multiply everything times 12, that's gonna leave me with a six X plus four equals nine. And then again, we just go through the same work here. 6x is equal to 5, divide by 6, divide by 6, x equals a 5, 6. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are some of your major mistakes that I see with students solving linear equations with fractions. I hope this was beneficial to you, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.